Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. You have to pardon my uh, voice, I've got a pretty nasty uh, head cold. Also wanted to sort of apologize, I, uh, I think this is one of the first videos I've taken where frankly I've let my shop get messier than I like to allow, so no good excuse for that and uh, my usual rule of thumb is simply not to allow myself to work until I clean, uh, which usually keeps it clean, but uh, I've got a few projects in the air and that's no good of an excuse, but it is what it is. Anyways, just wanted to walk you through a project I'm working on now, which is actually mostly all to do with sheet metal, and this involves um, some of my diacro equipment, which I've acquired, which I don't think I've all uh, previously shown on the blog, so here it goes. A friend of mine that works at a fabrication shop for home, you know, home decor and glass and metalworking and such helped me get the sheets that you're looking at here. This is, uh, let's see, this is the equivalent of four or excuse me, uh, the equivalent of six four by eight foot sheets um, of 050 or 0 .05 inches um, aluminum. I believe it's the 5052 compound of aluminum. It is double coated, excuse me, double coated with um, a powder coated primer, which was the reason I had to order it through him versus through a place like say Enco because uh, I wanted it to be primed. I'll tell you about that in a second. Anyways, I ordered uh, those six sheets, and he went ahead and cut them up into 12-inch strips for me, which was great, um, and delivered them the other day. So here's what I'm doing. I'm taking the strips you see there, and I kind of figure I'd just walk you through what I'm doing. Cut it down to an 18-inch long piece, which you see right here, and I do that on my Diacro 12-inch shear. The nice thing about this shear is it's got a uh, guide measure here, which not only gives you a precise uh, depth of the cut, but it also keeps the cut square. So chop that off into a 17, or excuse me, 18 inch piece. From there, you'll see it goes to uh, the corner notched piece right here. What I do, and I do that in my Diacro corner notcher, that's a six inch notcher. I will say that I spent quite a bit of time tramming up these two points here. I used a, uh, actually I'll just show you, I used a, um, Oh, not a dial indicator. How I'm, uh, I use the caliper, excuse me, to uh, to measure down the the depth gauge here. Function of the caliper to measure down to the depth of this part to get it exactly at three inches. And then I cut a couple test pieces and found that you actually need to kind of do that to measure the test pieces to get it set just right. But got that all squared up. So cut the four corners in the piece. Then I'm I've got a template which I use to to mark the holes, which you're seeing in this piece here. And then I used this cheap, I think it was $20 or $30 punch press from Grizzly to punch all the all of the holes except the two right there, which I can't reach with the throat of this punch press, which is a real bummer because I've then got to drill the two middle holes, which not only takes longer, but it's just not nice and clean of a uh, cut. Anyways, from there I start bending. There's the first bend right there are the two uh, smaller outside walls. The third bend is the top or bottom, whichever you prefer to call it. And then finally, the last bend forms this into a box. So that's a 3-inch deep box. It's 6 inches tall and 12 inches wide. I'm doing all those bends with my 12-inch Diacro finger brake, which has been great. I originally purchased the Grizzly one, which you can see back in there underneath the towels. And um, can't tell you how much better the Diacro is. For a number of reasons, the most important of which are that it's got a stop gauge. This isn't actually the factory stop gauge. This is a post uh, post production version. Um, and as you uh, excuse me, the chair here, but as you bend it up, the Diacro has um, the piece over there you're seeing with the 10 by 20 screw, which allows you to have a stop gauge set. Obviously, when you're bending 90 degrees on sheet metal, you actually have to bend a little bit past 90 to accommodate the flex. But uh, I find this to be great. And so that's it. I'll show you more about the project as it comes together. It's going to be a series of these boxes. Um, that's it for now. Thanks, everyone.